What's up, everyone, and welcome to Layer by Layer, the podcast about mass production 3D printing products and, you know, what's going on here at Slant 3D. Uh, let's dive right in. Number one, got to remind you all, we have a Patreon. Go over there. I bill a lot for time normally when I'm working as an engineer for real. We got to figure out a way to pay for all this camera work that I got to do. Um, but uh, no, do do help out on the Patreon. We uh, we post files over there. So in a lot of our design videos with like combs and thumbtacks and that kind of stuff, we post those STLs over on the Patreon for anybody who's supporting us over there. Uh, we try to get this podcast up there over there early so you get early access to it. And we're working on uh, new benefits for the patrons over there uh, because you guys are great. And it, it's we really appreciate you joining up over there. So um, there, I'm done showing. Um, okay, a few updates there. Oh, uh, the Fabaloo video. Kerry, if you're watching, that went great. Thank you. Um, for anybody who didn't know, we've recently partnered with Fabaloo.com uh, in order to uh, bring 3D printing news to you guys. We're, we're working on the format. The first video that we did was kind of a pure, just kind of overlay with narration. Um, we're messing with the style of that. The problem that we actually have, I'll just tell you right here, is that we don't have a teleprompter and these videos aren't scripted, but if we're doing the news, I can't go off script. So I can't, we need a teleprompter, um, but right now uh, I am a cheapskate and I don't wanna pay for a teleprompter for this necessarily. So we're doing uh, written word and we've been uh, reading uh, the articles that we and we write out the scripts for the summaries of the articles. Um, but we're trying to find a different way of doing it to where you can have a host and have a face to kind of come back to, um, but not have to worry about um, the eye line being wrong. Because if I'm looking down there, I'm not looking there. See down there, up there, right there, just below the camera. There's just below the camera. There's at the camera. There's just below. See, you see the problem here? We want to be looking into the camera. Um, we're going to mess with it a little bit and we may just kind of newsread it a couple ways, like over here and back and forth and play some editing tricks. But if anybody's got an idea of a really cool video format that solves those problems for us, uh, do let us know because we're looking for how to get that done. That being said, that video did really well. The Fabulu partnership is going to continue on. Uh, do send us news articles that you guys are interested from the Fabulu site. Um, and just let us know of our other articles in general. If you've got the scoop on something, let us know and we'll let them know and they can dig into it more because I'm sure they'd appreciate that as well. Um, but yeah, the we've, or we've got the partnership with them for news. So they're going to provide the news and we're going to provide the face. Um, uh, and editing and all the rest of it there. So it's just a, a direct partnership. No, none of us are sponsoring the other one. It's just a, a sharing of information to kind of help the community is the goal with it. Um... Oh, hot take, uh, master spool. Okay, I'm gonna get in trouble for this one. The, um, okay, we released a video of the Slant Spool V3 last uh, last week, uh, where we, we've started uh, filament working on filament, um, and we knew that we had to use one kg spool. Slant 3D does not use one kg spools. We hate the things, because you gotta change them over too much. They don't work in print farms, they're terrible. But. If we're going to sell filament, we have to sell in a 1kg format, probably. Um, still messing with it, but if we want to do it in a 1kg format, here's the thing. Uh, we've sold filament in the past. Filament spools are made by very old legacy companies. So old that they basically require that you fax them a check. It's not that bad but it's very cumbersome and it's very last century. Um, so we A, don't really enjoy working with companies that are that old and slow because they're not really open to changing. They're like, we sell you spools, deal with it. And the other issue is, is that filament spools are just horrible. They're not well designed, they're not any good. So we've, we've designed the Slant Spool version three um, to be an affordable, uh, recyclable spool. Uh, that is both a good product, looks cool, uh, and has a number of benefits to it because we're actually able to design the spool. So we are, we're taking our manufacturing acumen and pointing it at spools where we're going to make absolutely no money at all, but we want to make a cool spool. Um, and we're, we're going to be able to make these spools for basically the same cost as we would have been sourcing them. So uh, six, one half dozen the other, and we get a video out of the deal. Um, so we made this new spool. 
The number one comment that everybody has is that you shouldn't have a disposable spool. You should have use the master spool. Okay, so first of all, um, not to toot my own horn, but I designed one of the original master spool versions that was actually put into production and used with filament refills. Not not to brag, but we were just really early in that. When the master spool came out, we, we did a video and a design of a master spool that didn't have a right and left. That was the benefit of it, is that there was two halves that were identical that still screwed together. And we worked with a number of filament manufacturers to bring that spool to market along with refills. Um, I hate the master spool. I think it's a bad idea because the spool refills are not very reliable. The spools themselves are not very reliable, um, and it's a large chunk of plastic, which is a waste. Um, it's kind of like a reusable shopping bag. It, it, it has the same kind of problem with it as reusable shopping bags, where a cloth bag is fantastic because you get to use it over and over again, probably hundreds of times in your life. But that bag requires the same energy as like 10,000 plastic shopping bags. So it's really not helping the world that much. And that's kind of the idea of like the refillable spools. The other thing is, is that I'm a very avid user experience product guy. And I hate the user experience of reusable spools because it's more work for the customer. And it's disrespectful. The fact that I, I get 3D printing is a DIY thing and all you guys want to build your own machines and just do everything from yourself and just, I guess, knit your own sweaters and that kind of thing. And I'm with that. We built our own machines. But there's a limit. And putting your own filament on your own spool seems like crossing the line when it's very easy to create a good quality, structurally sound, usable spool. Um, so... The master spool, I considered a fail product because if it was going to win, it would have won. It's been around for five to six years by now, and it is struggling slash declining because I know that our master spool program stopped after like six months because nobody bought the refills. Um, and I know that all the refills that are out there are about the same cost as regular spools, so it's not a better option. I know that it's more labor for the manufacturers to make those refills. Um, and I know that spools are kind of nice to have because you're already having a deal with your printer failing. Why do you want to have to deal about your spool being put together right or having a loose coil in it or something like that? So we don't like the master spool. We're not going to use reusable spools. If you like them, fine. It's not that great of an idea. I look forward to your letters. Um, the... Uh, <laughs> But yeah, the, the master spool is a good idea, and for the people who want to use it, fine, but it's not a good product. Uh, it's just not. That's practically objective. Um, but anyhow, yeah, so everybody asked about why don't we use the reusable spool or do something like that with Slant 3D. We're not going to. Um, the other issue is that for us in producing this filament, we have to make sure that this fits into our existing workflows. That means that we cannot have random different stuff. Like, oh, inside of our print farms that use the vast majority of our filament, um, we're going to, we use spools, but over here we're also going to spool spoolless stuff. That's, that's just a waste of resources. And when you diversify product lines, you introduce the opportunity for bad quality to sneak in. And that's the one thing that we cannot allow. Um, so yeah, we're not, we're not fans of the master spool and it's not something that's going to be in the Slant 3D product catalog. Um, ever. But anyway, um, okay, let's see here. Next thing. The filament update in general. <laughs> filament update in general. Um, so <clears throat> we've got it all lined up. It's still waiting to be wired up because it's a 480 machine. Um, and we have 480 inside of the facility, but the machine uh, didn't come with the right plug. So we got to get some stuff revamped, which is a silly little slowdown, but it's there. Um, it should be up fairly soon and we should be able to start running material fairly soon. Though at the same time, guys, with this project, this is kind of a hobby company project. We want to get it done and we're going to do it, but we have to pay our bills first. Um, and we are a printed parts manufacturer. So we have to make sure that our clients are happy and everything else is done there before we go chase this squirrel. Um, so it might take a little bit longer than we expected, but the machine, we just cleared the spot down in the facility uh, for this machine. 
Um, the machine has been delivered. The machine is in place. We got to get it lined out. We got to knock some of the dust off from shipping um, and then get it plugged in. Uh, and then we'll start running some test filament. And what we're going to do is we're going to run a batch of filament. Um, and then we're going to use that in our farm just to make sure that we're being honest um, and know what the problems are. Because there's no way we'd run this and immediately ship it. Uh, that being said, we think we might have some filament, uh, just the material itself, ready to go um, probably in a couple of weeks. Uh, that for, for some of you guys who want to test, we'll, we're trying to get a page built out. We're trying to decide whether we are going to move this filament on the angled website or on its own separate site because kind of the model that we're looking at with like the subscription, it's probably better on a different site. But angled is our e-commerce arm, so we'd like to run it through that just so that we're using the same infrastructure. Um, the first spool of stuff that will be going out will be on traditional plastic spools um, just because we don't want to break the wheel. Um, so if you get those first few, the spools will be changing a little bit. And quite frankly, very early on, there will probably be some amount of variance uh, in the color or material type because we're just going to kind of be testing what is the best consumer version of this material. And that's going to evolve at least for the first couple of months. Um, we don't want that to be an ongoing thing because we want us to be a very reliable and consistent source of material for folks. Um, but we got to iterate and we got to just schlep through some stuff because we don't know what we're going to run into um, as far as like user experience and things that you guys might need or issues that come up because we're creating kind of a different format than what we're used to for our farms. Um, so there's that. That all being said, filament is on track. It's coming along. We got the machine. It's going in. Um, that's pretty much where that is. Should be fun. I'm excited. The, the filament is a really interesting kind of component of the business that we haven't visited since we were making filament during COVID. Um, so coming back to it has been fun. And to also do it in a less hectic way than the way we did it at COVID was really cool. Um, let's see here. Oh, this is an interesting one. So I operate on LinkedIn, so all the biz dev guys will see this. But we're hiring for a number of biz dev positions. Uh Someone who has experience inside of the 3D printing space, we've got a number of kind of like odd job categories that are kind of like this filament to where we're looking for biz dev guys who want to just kind of add to their book. So they'd be independent contractors who would um, just sign up for us. And then when the opportunity arises, they can make the sale and make some commission off of us. Uh, long term, we might do some kind of an affiliate thing, but that generally doesn't work very well for the affiliates. We want somebody committed um, who has real skin in the game. Um, so if there's any of you out there who are like sales guys who want to add filament to your filament portfolio, let me know because um, it, it be we're looking for people. Uh, so there's that. Um, let's see here. Submissions. <clears throat> so last week I put out the call. We will do a video reviewing designs. Um, we got a, a couple of commissions or uh, submissions last week, which was great. Thank you guys so much for submitting those. I do want to make clear right here that these will be public. If you submit it to us, they will be public. So if you're trying to keep something secret, this, this is don't submit it to a YouTube channel. Um, but we'll be going through those and we'll be doing a design review. Um, I will also have my normal level of candor on that. I don't pull punches. So I'd be kind of going at you the same way we go at a design meeting of like, that's a terrible idea. That looks cool. That's a nifty idea, but you should do this and that kind of thing. My opinions are my own, but you gave it to us to give you an idea. So that's them's the rules. Um, but we need a few more submissions. Uh, we got uh, about five or 10 last week, but I'd like to be able to sort through a few of them to get like really good examples. Uh, I think we're probably going to cover everybody, but again, it can be really quick. Um, like one to two minutes per, per section. So we need more. Um, so if you can send over anything that's cool, that's awesome. Also, if you just have like cool designs in general, I mean, you can point us towards the Thingiverse page. If it's a public design, we can look at it and say, eh, this could be pushed here and this could be pushed there. But we don't want to just pull random ones down because they're not that interesting. Uh, if it's something that you guys want, let's do that. Uh, Etsy. Oh, uh, yeah. Our, so our Etsy integrations. And our Etsy partnerships. We, we announced this a little while ago, the $100 for creating an Etsy store. Um, there were a lot of submissions on this. 
Uh, so we apologize for the delay of anybody who's waiting for us to get back to you. We let it just kind of be open for like two to three weeks. Um, and very recently we closed submissions and before that and now we're kind of just running through the sheet of folks and doing the evals on them to make sure that they meet criteria of what was supposed to be on the store and, uh, that kind of thing. So like, did you have limited colors? Do you have the minimum number of sales? All that kind of stuff. So we're going to start um, releasing those soon. Uh, with those Etsy folks, we're, when we reach out to you, we're going to ask if it's okay if we share them. Because I know a lot of people are really careful about like sharing their Etsy store, even though the Etsy store is public. Um, but we'd like to give uh, the folks that we work with kind of a platform here of cool stuff. Because just like we promote other cool products here, we'd like to show off your stuff and say, hey, this is a cool thing. Because we have a pretty nifty platform here. And the folks that we'd be bringing on to this generally have some pretty cool products out there that are great examples. And we can maybe push some traffic your way to make some more sales. Um, so we'll ask for permission before sharing any of that. I mean, we, we always keep our clients private. But if somebody wants to be on the channel who's a client, we want to put them up here. Um, to, to help them as much as possible because heck, they're a client. Why would we not promote them? <laughs> They'll sell more stuff. We may get to make more stuff for them. Um, so yeah, absolutely. We're very open about that kind of stuff. Um, oh, the other thing too, as far as submissions and getting you guys to do work for us, um, we want to continue to look for more 3D printed products that are real products, not just, oh, the university printed a thing and they're trying to get it off the ground. No, this has to be a real thing. So we have uh, a couple of videos coming out around like sneakers and like what Zellerfeld has been doing and that kind of stuff and, and Adidas and everybody else. I mean, shoes is a thing right now, though it's kind of an interesting category because it's not new. So well, we'll save that for the video. Um, subscribe below. The, uh, but we're looking for other categories and other products out there that are really well designed and optimized for 3D printing and take advantage of the process in a way that a lot of folks don't. So if you guys have any of those ideas, please comment down below. Um, generally, Etsy stores don't really fit into this category. It has to be a company. It can't be a side hustle. It has to be a real product, real organization, real committed team. It can be a startup. That's fine. But it can't be a side hustle. That's the I, it's a great source of income. It's not a demonstrable industrial example or case study. Um, so, there, but that again, kind of grain of salt. If you're like the biggest cookie cutter Etsy store on the planet or whatever else it was, we'll, we'd want to talk about you because it's a cool example. And we're trying to show folks what is possible with printing. I mean, like people are go crazy when we say, oh, we're cheaper than molding up to a hundred thousand parts which has been true for several years now. And yet people are like, no, nah, no, nah. 3D printing is too expensive. It's not, but <laughs> it's, <laughs> I, I know because like uh, we're still in business. But uh, anyway, so yeah, if you have other sweet products out there, we'd love to see them. So do let us know about that. Also, uh, thank you guys, everybody who's given us feedback on the new website. Um, we've released that recently and we did a full redesign of the site and it's been, um, it's kind of been a long time in the pipes. Um, uh, story for a different day, but uh, we finally got the site released um, and it looks great. And we're cleaning up uh, any sort of bugs for like mobile version and that kind of stuff right now because photos aren't scaling right or whatever it happens to be. But for the most part, it was a pretty clean launch and so far seems to be working. So let us know if there's anything weird in it. But that's pretty much it. Thanks everybody for watching. This has been Layer by Layer. We publish videos every single day, so you probably should subscribe if you haven't. And I gave you a whole bunch of homework, so comment down below with all of that, because it's due like right now. Have a great day, everybody.